fucking. I hear it all the time, wherever I go. The Giants fans, they rate their players and their heroes in a lot of different ways. And uh, they say you have the best tip of the hat walking off the field. So let's see it. <laughs> This team in particular, they have uh, some great left-handed bats and a, a lot of left-handed bats that can do some damage. So I need to uh, I need to focus in on those guys. And going into the postseason last year, and, uh, I knew uh, you know Howard, Ugly, Amanya, you name it. Those guys were going to be the, the the people I needed to face. So I focus in on that. And then uh, in our own division, the Diamondbacks have uh, traditionally been lefty dominant. So I know that I'll. Face them a lot, and then uh, Cargo down, and then uh, Cargo and Helton in, in Colorado. You know, there's different teams that you just kind of focus in on what you got to do. But uh, I like to think that my awkward, special, weird kind of thing. Uh, I didn't say plays. awkward. That's true. That's true. And unique, unique. Yes. Uh, uh, I feel that it plays, and I think that's why uh, that's why I've been able to have some success. Ryan Bluesong. A year ago, at the All-Star break, you were released. A year later, you're on the National League All-Star team. What was it like being introduced as an All-Star on the first base baseline on the Tuesday of the All-Star game? Second best experience of my life on the field. First was uh, the first standing ovation I gave here on Mother's Day. about five seconds of my name getting introduced, about a year worth of uh, stuff ran through my mind and where I was last year at that time, sitting on my couch, probably with a beverage in hand, uh, <laughs> contemplating what my next move was going to be and not quite sure where it was going to be. And uh, it's definitely a lot of emotions right there in, in five seconds, that's for sure. It was pretty, pretty awesome. <laughs>
that's that's what's going to drive us down the stretch. One, um, obviously the experience from last year, um, and two, that we're willing to do what it takes, and uh, hopefully that gets us to another title. Folks here, uh, right before the last road trip, the Giants went to the White House and uh, got to go into the East Room and were introduced in front of a lot of uh, dignitaries and leaders of our country as the world champions. And then you got to meet the president, which is very cool. How cool was it? Well, I mean, I, I, I might be uh, in the minority in my locker room as far as uh, really enjoying that trip because it's so long. You guys got to understand, when you meet the president, he runs the show, obviously. So, you know, we were waiting around for three plus hours for that five, ten minute window. So, uh, you know, that part, I love that stuff. And, and any time you get to, to, you know, meet the, your commander in chief and the leader of the free world, I'm, that, you know, I'm sure all of you would love that opportunity regardless of who it is. I think it's just special time and uh, you know I think it was something that uh, ultimately once it happened everybody enjoyed that moment because um, that's that's the perk of being a world champion you know you get to go meet the president that following year and I think that's you know when you're doing those things that means good things are happening so hopefully we can kind of build on that and you know hopefully that gave enough uh, a little taste for everybody when we get ready to get into the postseason that you know we do it again we get to meet him again so. Hey, you forgot that we got to meet the dog, too. We got to meet Bo. Bo. Let me also say, we, we met Bo a few years ago, the first time we ever went to the White House, just on a little tour, and Bo ate my sport coat. I, I was trying to pet Bo, he was a puppy, and he, he chewed up the sleeve of my sport coat. And Bo has done some really effective obedience training. Today. In regard to his jacket, there was a bunch of mustard stains on it. Alright, Manel. Thanks, Dave. We've got uh, three fans ready with some questions for you. Good morning, sir. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Mark. I'm from Santa Lake, California. Alright, Mark, who's your question for? My question is for Ryan. Go right ahead. During your time out of baseball, did you uh, stay in touch with some players or anybody still in the game? And if so, what kind of advice did they give you about hanging in there or, you know, what? Get back. Well, fortunate enough, um, I was actually only out of the game for about seven days. But, um, I mean, being in the minor leagues, that's kind of being out of the game. No, there's, there's a bunch of guys that I played with and coaches and people that I've run across and I did, you know, talk to them. And, you know, everyone just kept reassuring me that my stuff was still good and to keep going and, and, and you know, something good was going to happen and, you know, thank God that it, it did and I'm just glad it's here. And good morning to you. What's your name and where are you from this morning? Hi, um, I'm Natasha Halverson, uh, also born and raised in San Francisco. Woo! Natasha, who's your question for? Uh, my question is for Lopez. Um, it's pretty obvious that the bullpen is a pretty close knit group of guys who like to play pranks on each other. So I was wondering who you're closest to, and also if you can share a story uh, of the clubhouse and any pranks that you guys might have played. Well, we are a pretty close knit group. That is true. Um, I think. Uh, I don't know if I'm closer to one person in particular. I think that's what the best. That's the best thing about the bullpen. We have such a great dynamic. Uh, you know, obviously Wilson. Uh, Wilson, had, he's he's his own special creature, and that's what makes him. Um, Affel, I'd say Affel. Affel's good to to get going when we start getting that banter going back and forth, and uh, you know. Basically, the game we try to play is, uh, it's called, you know, like a, a, a slurp game, which is basically, you tell somebody an absolute blatant lie and hope that the person bites on it. You know, like, uh, you know, last night, let's just say, everybody knows we wear orange on Friday nights. And we're like, oh, we're wearing our white jerseys today. And you're just waiting for somebody to go, really? And then you go, <laughs> 
this is what we do, that's what we do. We try to keep it fun, keep it fun. And I'd say that's the most PG game we play. It's very mature humor. It's our wild and wacky bullpen. Yes, you have a little giant fan here. Hi there, what's your name? My name's Xavier, and I'm from Tennessee. Well, welcome, Xavier. Who's your question for? Ryan and Tamir. Go right ahead. How old I'm seven years old, but how old how do you need to learn how to throw a curveball? I'll take it since I don't throw one. <laughs> <laughs> my, my basic rule, maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe Ryan will agree or not. Uh, oh my God. I didn't throw an off-speed pitch uh, growing up. I decided to change up, and my coach told me I wasn't allowed to throw a breaking ball until I had hair under my armpits. That's usually the general rule that I use when I work with some of the kids learning how to pitch me all season. I tell them, you know, lift up your arm. You know that? Sorry. Uh, I don't know. That's my thought. I'm going to go with that. You'll hear it in the armpits, everyone. All right, well, thanks very much. Now we have another opportunity. For a couple of you to take home some autographed baseball signed by Ryan and Javier. Let's get our first winner located in section 107. Row C. Where one of my Section 110.